Hey, it's the uh, fucking Ryder Club Radio, whatever. Who gives a shit? I'm Jeff. Wow, all right. You're fucking underselling us a little, I think. <laughs> Look, only two people are listening to this shit right now. My mom and your fucking dad. It doesn't matter. <laughs> your mom and my dad. I really hope they're not listening together. <laughs> well, how did we go so wrong? <laughs> Jeff, what mistakes did we make? I think you've been put in a sour mood about no. something. Okay, Ryder Club Radio is the best podcast in the history of mankind. <laughs> and combined, we have the biggest dick you'll ever see. Okay, I'm yeah, Jeff. That's true. If you add Jeff's 15 inches to my two, <laughs> you get a combined 17. I'm Liam. And this is a podcast where we watch Tokusatsu. Uh, more specifically, Common Rider, and I guess Super Sentai is legit part of the show forever now, and there's no getting, there's no coming back from it. At least if the next season sucks, then it'll stop yeah. being part of the show. But uh, for now, uh... we have to watch Common Rider regardless because it's in our name. Yeah, that's but we for can sure. drop Super Sentai. We can, yeah. If <laughs> Sentai sucks. We can get out. It's, it's, it's. We're not caged like we are with Common Rider. We're stuck in a, a fucking gilded cage. But yeah. You saw us caged. You saw what happens to caged animals. <laughs> For a whole podcast. year, we almost killed each other. This week, we watched Common Rider X8 Episode 4 and Animal Sentai Juoger Episode 35. Liam, why don't you tell us what happened on X8 this week? All right, let me take you on a journey. Do it uh, right. I'll, well, we'll see. This week on Common Rider X8, a new patient comes in. And he comes in with a dude called Kiria, a mysterious man called Kiria, who wears a red leather jacket no matter where he is. And Kiria is, he's Kamen Rider Laser, that's official now. Yeah. And he, he says, look, X8, I know you're the genius gamer, the, the genius gamer M, I'm gonna get your belt back for you, because I think you're a stand-up, stand-up fella. So he goes to, to, to Snipe, to Taiga, and he says, hey, look, there's this bugster rampaging, let's have a little contest to see who can beat it. And if I beat it, I'll take that gashat back. So they, they go all, they all gather by the veranda next to the cafe. And they, they have a big bugster fight. The meatball man is there. And they have a, the, the meatball bugster becomes a wheel. So they it all have a fight. a wheel skeleton. They, they all have a fight with a big pinwheel. And <laughs> this all fucking brave shows up because that's just what he does now, apparently. There's a big well, fight. He wants to fight against Taiga. He wants to take Taiga's belt and gashat because he's too dangerous to be using it. Yeah, that's true. He has motivation for him being in this scene. Um, so they're all fighting the wheel, and the wheel gets away because Laser, Kamen Rider Laser, cannot chase it unless he's got a rider. He can't. I guess he just can't like rev himself. He just he doesn't have that power. I guess. So he can't chase it, so the thing gets away. Uh, what, Gen- what a terrible design, by the way. <laughs> you don't like the bike? No, I mean, design-wise, he can't use his own powers. Oh, what a yeah. terrible fucking power. Well, it's a, he's a bike. A bike's gotta have a rider, right? Why would you make him just a bike? Why wouldn't you give him, like, a normal form as well? I don't fucking know. This is terrible design on Genom Corporation's fucking end. Speaking of Genom Corporation, Kamen Rider Genom shows up, kicks yeah, everybody's he, ass again for no reason. He does the second to last episode of Ghost Thing, where he just comes into the scene on a bicycle, beats the shit out of everyone. Yeah, yeah it was awesome. So I would kicks... love to see that scene recut in two ways. One, with uh, fucking 90s ass rock music playing in the background. Like, just cut it with the opening to Power Rangers in the background. <laughs> or two, with a uh, Bicycle by Queen playing. Oh, of course. <laughs> Get on it! Get on it, legions of fans. Legions of fan. <laughs> um, yeah, so, fuck, where were we? Were we talking about bikes and shit? So Gano uh, appears and kicks everyone's ass, and the, the yeah. Bugster gets away. So the patient The Bugster sister... gets away... Because Emu is like, we have to save the patient. And the entire time I was like, you do that by beating the fucking bugster. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta pick him up off the ground, though. We gotta take him and put him in the bed that does nothing in the pit. Yeah. You gotta put something in the show. <laughs> so the, the patient's sister has been kidnapped. They, they gotta go get her. And Racer, Laser, sorry, decides to have a race to get her. 
He says, "Let's go." He decides exit. to have a laze to get her. <laughs> He just des- he decides to have a laze to get her, and um, so they they have a b- big race. They do like a level transition, that cool thing that you saw before, mm-hmm. and the patient sisters at the end of it, at the end of the road, and they have a big battle race, and then they fucking win the race, and they save the sister, and the patient is saved. But then you find out that Kyria was actually just using X Aid because he's a coroner. That's his thing. So he studies. He wants to study the bugsters and learn more about them. So he's like, yeah, okay, fuck off, X8. I, he tells him earlier, when, when he first appears, he's like, yeah, I, I want to destroy the Bugsters, because in the Zero Day, I had a friend who died in the Zero Day. And he comes to X8 now, and he's like, yeah, it was actually, it was a bunch of bullshit, I just lied. Uh, no, I, I never just, had a friend who died in Zero never had Day. Friends. Yeah, I just need to go and look at this corpse. Uh, so he, he goes to the corpse, but Genom destroys it. So obviously the Genom Corporation is in on this. He destroys it so he can't look at it. And then Genom puts a bike on his shoulders... And kicks everybody's ass to, to high hell and back. And then just strolls on out of there. So Jeff, what did you think of Kamen Rider x to Episode 4? This was a weird one. Weird? I don't know. I don't know if I'd call it weird. I'd say it's my favorite so far. Really? Yeah. I mean, I liked the episode. I just felt like there was a lot of like strangeness in it. That's like ill-explained, I guess. Yeah. Like, um... For instance, the level select makes uh, little to no sense to me. You just set yourself a goal, and the goal disappears from the real world into your fake level world. Because, like, uh, the green monster mash doesn't send her to that world. She just disappears and appears in it at the end. He even says, oh, I guess we're starting now. What the fuck? Jeff, do you ever stop fucking talking? Not even when I sleep, actually. (laughs) I thought this episode was the best one. Really? I, th- that's, this I is... don't. I don't think I agree with that. But, this episode I sold mean... me on the show. Really? Yeah. Wow. It's, it's the fact that the guy turns out to be fucking with him the whole time was a bit of a saving grace. Otherwise, it would have been like it was a little corny. Like I mean, writers always corny, but it was a little extra corny. Like I have to save my friend or whatever. Oh, they stole my girlfriend. Please, uh, fucking rumble high. Please go save my girlfriend. <laughs> now you're pulling references that I don't know. Please, uh, I was trying to think of River City Ransom. Oh. Please, River City Ransom, go save my girlfriend. I love River City Ransom. Yeah. <laughs> I liked it. I thought the characterization was pretty cool. I think the guy who plays, uh, Kyria? Kyria. Yeah, Kyria isn't a very good actor. Nope. That's for sure. He's he's a good facial actor, but as soon as he's doing voiceover, it's like he's just reading the script. He's like a teenager that doesn't read very well, just reading a script out loud. (laughs) Like when you're reading out loud in class and they're handing the book around. Yeah, exactly. Now it's Kyria's turn. (laughs) Um, I liked Kyria a lot, despite his acting flubs. He even went before the twist, which I did not see coming. Like, he seems like an asshole, but I thought he was going to be like a lovable... Sort of like, oh, he's he's a little sloppy, but he's a good guy at heart. Yeah. But then at the end, he comes in, he's like, oh, I'm just, no, oh, a total prick. I loved that. I, I, I really was afraid. Because now you know they're all going to beat each other up all the time. That's, yeah, that's none really... of them are actually friends whatsoever. The, there's only one good man in the whole, this whole five riders. There's only one good guy. Everyone else is, is cool. a prick in some capacity. I knew that when um, Kyria was shown to be a dickhole that you were going to be happy with the series from then on. I could have guessed that. <laughs> yeah, I guess I I just say... felt like this episode was a little strange, maybe. Like, the bike action... Uh, I love bike action in Kamen Rider, and I think I've mentioned this before, or I'm getting deja vu really fucking heavily, one or the other. Uh, bike action in Kamen Rider tends to be either really cool or really kind of awkward, where they're just kind of following each other. Really slowly on a course. Yeah, I think I know what this episode was. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's kind of... They they try hard. I appreciate they edit it really hard. The editors probably... Yeah, there's a ton of editing in the race scene. The editors were pulling 20-hour shifts trying to put the right music clips on. Like, God, we gotta make this shit fucking exciting, please. I like that his final attack is just this massive, like, uh, fire back from the muffler. I thought that was cool. Um, yeah, I like... Just, like, when, when, when Laser, when Laser came out and said, oh, I'm your friend, I was like, ah, it's fine. 
but when he came home, I was like, no, I'm a bad guy. That's, I, I just, uh, I was happy. My heart was at ease. I think I'm done worrying about the show now. I mean, yeah, I could understand that entirely, but why did you think he was going to be a good guy after all the times he appears and menacingly laughs in the background of scenes in he the past three episodes? He doesn't seem evil. He just seems like a, like kind of a, kind of a sloppy guy. Like kind of a, like your friend who talks about fucking other guys' girlfriends, and you're like, well, you're kind of a fucking dick, but he's not evil. You got a friend like that, Liam? I, well, I, I did in the past, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I did. I worked at a company where this guy came in and refilled the soda machines all the oh, time. Oh, yeah, this guy. And uh, I guess I made friends with him. I, I remembered his name. I'm sure he doesn't listen to this podcast. His name was Richard. <laughs> Richard's uh, sitting at his computer like, what the fuck? What? Are you putting me on blast, Jeff? I thought we were friends. I get shit about me on the internet. But uh, he would just be like, yeah, my wife's going to find out about my mistress, and my mistress is going to find out about my girlfriend. <laughs> and, uh, just every day. And I, I wasn't even like sugarcoating it for this dude. I'm like, wow, that's pretty fucking slimy, dude. What are you doing? <laughs> the guy's on like six levels of adultery constantly. Yeah, he's like, uh, I'm worried that my wife will find out that she'll be mad. I'm like, yeah, she's going to be mad, dude. She's going to leave you. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm like, well, she probably should. You're cheating on her. And he <laughs> laughed. It was like, yeah, you're probably right. And I'm like, I'm not joking with you here, Richard. See, that's, you're a piece of shit. That's kind of how I pictured... I pictured Kiryu as being an asshole with a heart... Or Kiria as being an asshole with a heart of gold. That's sort of what I pictured him as. But he's more of like a an asshole with a heart of ass. He's, yeah, his 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 whole ass is his asshole heart. His, exactly, that's how I'd say it. But I loved him. I... He, I He's confused. He's, he's me. my favorite of the other writers. Really? Personality wise. Of like the non emu writers? Yeah. Really? That's Personality wise, he's my favorite of them. That's interesting. I wouldn't I wouldn't have said that. I wouldn't have guessed you'd you'd say that, but uh I like that type of character. Like I think I've mentioned before that my favorite mutant is uh Quicksilver, who's a oh, huge yeah. fucking asshole. Yeah. I like the type of character that's like flamboyantly dickish. That's my favorite. Yeah, I guess yeah, he's he's fun. He's a fun guy. Everything about him confuses me, though. Because if you hear... We always talked laser might have been like a mistranslation. But when they speak in this episode, they are very clearly saying laser with a Z. Yeah, they're not saying racer at all. So why the fuck is he called laser? Because he's as fast as a laser beam. God, that's so fucking dumb. I don't know. Maybe they thought racer was too on the nose. So let's just call him... Common, calling a gun rider Kamen Rider Snipe is too on the nose, so let's call him Kamen Rider Vuvuzela. Call him Kamen Rider Dingle Where's the Bopper. connection there, Liam? There's none. Just like There's laser. There's a connection between racing and going as fast as a laser. That's really tenuous. That's really fucking tenuous. That's like calling that's like calling Kamen Rider Snipe, you call him Kamen Rider... I don't know, Com, Kamen Rider... Kamen Rider butt, because a gun has a butt on the back of it. Like, that's that's a, it's a stretch. It's a logical stretch, I think. I think we found out what Liam's name would be if he was a Kamen Rider. Kamen Rider butt? Yeah, because you're a big fucking butthead. I'll take Kamen Rider butt. If I get to be a rider, I'll take that. I'll fucking He's take that. Kamen Rider ass man. <laughs> <laughs> the assistant manager. <laughs> I'm just saying. This episode was full of confusing things. Another confusing thing about Kyria. I was under the impression that the rider things were suits. But yeah, apparently as was not. I. What? What, what happened? I don't know. They can't be suits, though, because they turn into the big dumb mascot people first. Well, I figure that's like a big suit. Like a, like a Hulkbuster. No. no. It could, yeah, it could be like a Hulkbuster. They turn into the mascots. What I don't understand about this series... Is I love this series so far, by the way. Me too. But they obviously created the idea of like a video game writer, and everything in the series is based around uh, X Aid's design. So the other characters turn into these little super deformed platformer characters before they turn into their regular forms, which doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I could see it with Brave. I could see that guy being an RPG yeah. character, like a Final like Fantasy he's a, one. Like, he's a little isometric RPG sprite. Yeah. But it doesn't make any sense for somebody like Snipe. No, or Racer. Or for somebody or laser. like Laser. I'm a, that's going to take some getting used to. Yes, I, it is. I got a Racer <laughs> in my head so much. 
Yeah. Um, but th- I don't really care about that. That's just, from a design standpoint, doesn't make much sense. This episode was like... It's strange that you say that this is your favorite because you were complaining that the show was moving too fast, and I felt like this was by far the fastest moving episode out of the four. Struggling so hard to come up with a pun. I'm, I'm, the mm. gears of my brain are grinding so fast. Fast speed, motorcycle, fast. motorcycle speed, fast. <laughs> race, race, goal, finish line, fuck. Late, Just... late, laser? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's, look, it's, it's... The how do I how do I put this? The main plot doesn't move forward all that much. I feel in this episode, we're introduced to Laser, but this is like most most of the episode is just about Laser, and and about Kyria and his character. Like the actual plot of the episode is just an episodic thing to show you what kind of man he is, which I think is fine. I think it's fine if that moves a little quick. What I, what I was scared of earlier is that the main plot of the show. Like exhausting itself in the early episodes, but this one doesn't yeah. doesn't really advance the main plot that much. It's just about it's about Kyria. It's all about Kyria and setting up Kyria, which is fine because it, it did that very well. I know. I guess I can understand that. The thing that pops into my mind though is um, from here on out, how is Kyria going to get anything done? Is Ammo just going to be dumb enough to fall for it over and over and over again and like help him in his goal? Or is he going to just be like, look, you have to use me. You got no choice. How are you going to catch up? It's, well, he's, yeah, I guess. That's that's actually pretty clever, actually. That's really cool. That's a really <laughs> cool thing. I hadn't thought of that at all because I was like, well, when are they going to ride? They hate each other. But now... <laughs> He's you don't like, have a motorcycle, dude. How are you going to get there? <laughs> he's going to be like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And he's going to be sitting up. Laser's going to be sitting off to the side like, I'm right here, dude. Just get on. I'm right here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> lots of fan fiction to be written about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. right here, dude. Get on. I'm right. Just hop on. You have no choice. Come on. Hop on. <laughs> oh, God. This was, a, this was a pretty good episode. I just... Um, I had a couple problems with it. I just, um, with the show, like, all my gripes aside, how I, I complained a lot about how they were introducing too many writers too fast, mm-hmm. uh, they have been, they've been setting up their characters very well, which is like, here's, the episodes are almost like vignettes of, like, just here's the, here's Brave, and this is an episode just all about Brave, and all the whole plot is just to facilitate uh, showing you who he is. And the first episode actually does a really good job of introducing Emu as a character and what he's going to be for the rest of the series without getting bogged down in explaining the world to you. Yeah. I feel that way about a lot of series, that the main character gets the shaft with his introduction. Like, the other characters get these big, grandiose introductions and everything, but the main character had to be introduced at the same time as the plot, the world, other background characters... So they never got their chance to shine at the beginning like others did. But uh, Emu doesn't suffer from that. The first yeah. episode does a great job. It's it, of... it's like the logistics of the bugsters and stuff. They leave it a mystery, which is good. Because it's not really something that needs explaining right now. So yeah, you avoid all that shit. You avoid the, the, the info dump on a lot of early writer shows. Or the, a lot of like, more, more recent writer shows fall into in the first couple episodes. It's good. Yeah, I agree. Um... I like all the characters so far, except um, I don't really like Snipe all that much. Snipe might be my favorite. Snipe is kind of boring. He doesn't really have much to his personality besides that he wants the gachettes. That's why I like him. He he loves the power of video. He, he facilitates fights a lot. That's really what I like about him so much. Yeah, you liked What's-His-Face, Odin, for Odin. that reason, even yeah. though he did jack shit. I like, I like everyone in Ryuki, really, to a degree, except for the movie writers. You like scissors? They can suck it up. Yeah, I, scissors <laughs> arc is really good. It is. The whole arc with scissors is fucking great. I like Raya a lot. Nobody seems to ever even remember him. He Raya. was a very important plot point. Yeah, absolutely. Remember when he did that thing that affected the plot really heavily? Um, spoilers. You know, when he, yeah. Spoilers. Don't talk about thing. <laughs> I like Raya. I like Raya less than I like everyone else, but I like Raya. Yeah. I like him more than... My, my favorite writer in Ryuki is Zolda. Zolda the Great. Zolda is my favorite writer in Ryuki. Uh, but we're not talking about Ryuki. We're talking about x And my favorite writer in x is Emu. Really? Yes. Wow. I guess Emu he's the only is... likable guy. Yeah. 
<laughs> my second favorite so far is Laser. <laughs> Although design wise, my second favorite is, or my favorite is uh, Brave. Brave, really? Yeah. He has the coolest. I remember, like when he when he steps out of that, he does this little jump up to level two, and he steps through the door, and it's such a the design quality is such a step up, more so than any other rider. I think that's true. It, it's it's astonishing. I like his little shield. I do too. I don't know. They all have look really cool for like they're X Aid cool. They're really kind of like <laughs> ridiculous designs with big anime eyes on them, but they feeling, looked really cool. I have a feeling this is going to be a term we're going to be using for a very long time. <laughs> X Aid cool. Like when the next rider gets announced, is it cool or is it X Aid cool? It's a, a, that will be a term for a long time, I'm sure. <laughs> the like I like Snipes design a lot. I don't really like him as a character that much so far. We don't really know all that much about his motivations besides I want the gashats. <laughs> Give them to me. I think uh Snipes thing is going to be his past as we learn more and more details about why he got disbarred or, or why he got, you know, his, his license revoked. That's Yeah, that's gonna... interesting stuff that I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing, but right now he's pretty flat. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, I like so it. is Brave, really. Brave is actually pretty flat as well, but Brave has the um, misfortune of being the second build rider, which never turns out well for anybody in Common <laughs> Rider. You saying he's going to die, or...? No, I'm saying he's going to basically be relegated to standing in the background for That's most of the series. If, if once his arc is over, the worst case scenario, once his arc is over, he's just going to be like the buddy... And and X Eight's mm. gonna do everything, and Bray's gonna be like, "Yosh," and go with him. Yeah, he's gonna be like, "Wow, X Eight, you're the best." Okay, hang on, let's not. Let's go to your dad's grave. <laughs> Takuro Fukuda <laughs> isn't writing this show. <laughs> thank God, I thank fucking God every day that he's that he's not writing this show. <laughs> it's everybody's just gonna shit on Amu all the time, and I'm fine with that. He's the good guy. <laughs> That's that's to me is the pull of the series is uh, one good man trapped in a world of of terrible people, and, which and is his, Ryuki and his struggles. But that's compelling. That's compelling as fuck. I think for yes, a TV it is. show, somebody who's actually standing up and doing the right thing while everybody else is doing selfish shit is great. It's, Especially it's a, when he has to face the repercussions of that. Yeah, he's, he's going to have a lot of good moments. He's going to get fucked over a lot. The, they're going to put him through the ringer, I think. Yeah, he's going to weather the storm, though. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait for that. This show is shaping up to be great. Exactly. If this, if I can say one thing about this episode that's like 10 out of 10 is that it is moving towards excellent things. Yeah. That's, I mean, I'm really looking forward to it. x has won me over already, but now Liam's on board, too. Even even the episodes that I didn't like so much, uh, you know, I said that so many times, it felt like it was setting up a much better show, and mm-hmm. I feel like we're getting into that now, with four and hopefully five, too. Well, so we'll I'm, see. I'm we'll see next happy. week about five. What uh, did you next think, week... wait, what did, before oh. we start talking about next week, what did you think about Shakariki Sports? Uh, we've seen Shakariki Sports before. Well, I mean, what did you think seeing it in motion here? Uh... Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I loved it. It seems I'm very much on the fence about it because it's still stupid. It looks better in motion, especially like everything except the shoulders looks great. The shoulders are like the worst type of rider shoulders in that they're just a thing, which is dumb enough, but they're the worst type of rider shoulders in that they flop around when he's moving. Yeah, which is terrible it's you can't avoid it or else you know your rider character can't move his fucking arms correctly (laughs) but it just looks so weird seeing these floppy bike tires moving on his shoulders while he's walking (laughs) that's the best part though that's that's the draw (laughs) that's what brings that's what puts asses in the seats it's it it's it like the design is pulled together by floppy shoulders I like that he pulls them off and uses them as, as wheel weapons. I thought that was dumb as fuck. What? And the reason why I thought it was dumb as fuck is that he doesn't hold the wheel weapon by the wheel and attack with it, which would be awesome. No. He holds it by a little peg in the middle. Yeah, what are you gonna... Like, why? he's holding an ice cream cone. A really How... big ice cream cone. Jeff, why would you attack with a wheel if you're not gonna spin it? Answer me that. Riddle me that shit. You spin it in the air, motherfucker. No, you spin it... 
You spit it. Look, have you ever seen uh, daytime Emmy Award winning television series Xena Warrior Princess? Uh, you know what? I have not, but I am familiar with the IP. Uh, <laughs> with the IP, huh? <laughs> uh, Xena throws a, a fucking chakram yeah. for her weapon, and it's badass as fuck. <laughs> And she doesn't hold it like an ice cream cone by a stick in the middle. Well, she should. Maybe she should start. It's dumb. Shagri Sports looks alright. It looks much better in motion. I enjoy it. Uh, not big on the shoulders. Definitely not big on um, holding it by a peg in the middle. But it's... it's. I would call it... I think Shagri Sports, like the, that form, is the epitome of x cool. Like, that's... If someone, if someone were to ask me, if someone who hadn't seen x were like, What's x cool? I'd just show him that, and I'd be like, no, if you X-Aid don't like this... Cool. x Cool Cole is x himself. That's yeah. the epitome of x Cool Cole with his bright, garish-ass colors that somehow work together to make a cool design. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I could see that. You I know guess. what the fucking wheel with the peg in the middle reminds me of? What is it? Did you ever you have one of those toys that has, like, a handle on it, and there's, like, a little helicopter on top, and you pull a string, and it, like, flies up into the air. The helicopter yeah. spins. That's what it is. I that's what it, it reminds that. me of. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Get like a helicopter game. Wouldn't that be great though if he pulled a string and the wheel like flew up in the air and attacked? <laughs> you could fly up in the air and shoot lasers down in like a big circle, and everyone would be like, "Bah!" And there'd be, there'd be pyrotechnics and they jump into the air. It's ah. probably for the best that we're not in charge of this show. Now that I think about it, I think it's for the worst that we're not in charge of this show. <laughs> put a put a helicopter game for man. Look at. Look at this toy. Sir, you pull the, the thing and it flies. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Jeff, the toy category is done. We can't add shit. Do it! Do it now! <laughs> Put him in episode six. You're fired, Mr. Tanaka. <laughs> Pack your shit. Uh, okay. Anyway. Is that all we have to say about XA number four? That is all I have to say about XA number four, except that I'm really excited to see where the series goes. I, I haven't felt joy in my heart watching Kamen Rider in a long time. So it's really nice. Yeah, I'm excited for episode 5. What a strange feeling this is in my heart. Yeah. Well, you... I mean, I was excited watching other Kamen Rider stuff at the well, same yeah. time as Ghost. But... Yeah, I get excited when I watch Agito once a year. Yeah. But... yeah. No. Or, what episode are you on, Liam? Uh, 40. 40. 40. Uh, a couple of friends of ours started watching Agito like two weeks ago. Maybe like a month ago, and mm-hmm. they finished it the other day. Yeah, well... And uh, Liam is still on episode 40, and he started watching when he was 10 years old. <laughs> this, uh, look, I'm a guy who likes to savor a show. I like to savor my common Rider, alright? Look, if you took a bite of food and kept it in your mouth long enough to savor it for this amount of time, it would cease to be in your mouth before you even fucking swallowed the food. It would be, disintegrate into dust. That'd be really good for your digestive system, though. I guess. Wouldn't even have to mash anything up. You'd be tasting that tasty burger for, like, a six years. <laughs> You'd be long dead, but uh, your digestive system would thank you from beyond the grave. Okay, well, look, so what I'm going to get it done, news, Liam. I'm going to fucking get it done, okay? I, I don't pledge. care about your fucking slow-ass Agito-watching <laughs> mishaps. If I get it done by the next episode by the time we record the next podcast episode i'm gonna ask rcr corp for uh, to double my pay uh you can ask them i'm gonna i'm gonna nut up and do it look i'm, I'm tired do you of not remember what hour. happened to the last guy who asked for a raise i can still hear him screaming he's fucking dead he's, he's the dead guy <laughs> he's so dead that he's the dead guy why do they keep letting him back in the building man every once in a while well, he is a zombie. How are you going to stop him? That's true. He doesn't trip the scanners. The only guns we have on the premises are plastic toys that don't even make noises. <laughs> you shoot him and it goes... It, 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 it's supposed to go pew and scare people off, but the batteries ran out, so it's just... We, uh, we don't get paid enough to buy new batteries, so... Yeah. It's not in the budget. That's what they keep saying. Also, yet. electricity and heating. Not in the budget. <laughs> Gamma patrols are apparently in the budget, but not not proper pay, no. We, uh, we're running off a generator right now, so I'm hoping it holds out for the next <laughs> 45 minutes or so. Got about six glasses of water here. Should do me for a couple weeks. <laughs> uh, tell me what happened in the news. Yeah, later. okay. 
Enough about that shit. Okay, two things happened this week. Two whole things. A Kamen Rider Spectre movie. Plot details. Would you like to hear them? I guess. Okay, so the Spectre movie is going to take place two years after the Pac-Man movie. It's going to be about Spectre and Alan trying to fix the gamble world back to what it used to be. All right, what's the next news? Wait, wait, hang on. Let's talk a little about the Spectre I don't movie. care! I feel like there's a missed opportunity here. I mean, I know Ghost was I feel 50 like episodes. Ghost itself is a missed opportunity. <laughs> Ghost is 50 episodes of missed opportunity after missed opportunity. But wouldn't it be great if there was a movie about Spectre and his dad? Like, isn't... Shouldn't that be what the movie's about? Didn't... Did Spectre's dad die in the movie that he was in? He died in the show. Remember, he died in one of those stupid show vignettes, but probably died in the movie. Oh, yeah. But he was like a ghost man. Did his icon explodorate? Is my I don't question. Fucking no! It looked like he was dead. I don't. Care it doesn't bothered. really matter in Ghost. They could bring him back six times. Look, even even when Overtime eventually subs this movie, I don't know if I'm gonna watch it. So I'm not. Yeah, touch and go on that. I'm not I'm watching it. Find out. You but can the... find somebody else to do the podcast with you if you're gonna talk about that shit. Oh, wouldn't that be great though? Like, imagine. Like, if okay, you replaced me? No, yeah, that'd be sick, actually. <laughs> but, like, imagine maybe you make a couple hints in the show, do a little arc for Spectre about how his dad left him, and they help him deal with it, but they never find it. And then this movie could be like, someone's like, hey, man, I saw your dad in this place really far away. And he goes on, like, a sick road trip to try and find his dad this and find sounds himself. Like the, this sounds like the Gotcha Man movie. Is that Did what you the ever gotcha see No, I've only like seen the, it the original show. Gotcha Man movie is about Ken the Eagle trying to find his lost father, and That's... he goes on this sick world trekking journey that to find him. That's fucking awesome. That movie's fucking sick, dude. I wish, I wish they made Kamen Rider movies that had like drama and themes and character. That had like a plot beyond shit explodes and <laughs> guy wants to destroy world. Look at all these new. Look at this new writer. Oh, he's so bad, and then they gotta kick him. <laughs> Oh no, they didn't kick him hard enough. They had to believe in themselves. Now they kick him hard enough. Oh, uh, Kamen Rider movies make me want to be dead. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly why I don't care about this movie, regardless of what's going to be in it. The only one I care about right now is the one that has Pac-Man in it. Well, that's you're, it. you're going to get it soon. You're yeah. going to get yours. Well, we're going to get it like a year from now when somebody actually subs it. Yeah, well, that's fine. Excite Subs has said they're not going to do movies or specials or anything. Oh, they are? Well, they're not until they're done with the series. Oh, yeah. Well, that's fine. Which is fine that. by me. Fine by me. I can wait. As long as they got a show. They got, uh, they got lives. They can take their time. Yeah, we're happy with them now. They're the ones that are subbing our show. <laughs> I guess we're still fine with Overtime since they're subbing uh, Animal Sentai Juoger. Yeah, they're doing Juoger. They're doing Time Ranger. They're doing good stuff. Yeah, they're going. They're they're doing good stuff. The next news story is uh, a famous Japanese pro wrestler named Hiroshi Tanahashi is going to be playing a robot bugster in the the Pac Man movie. Really? Do we know anything about that character? Um, all in, he's a guy who uses like a prototype gashat to turn into a robot bugster. That's all we know. Hmm. So. We actually one of our email questions this week was about that. Oh, really? Well, I guess we'll read that in a minute, then. Yeah, we'll get to it in a minute. Uh, Just to make sure people don't stop listening. Uh, Yeah, we have questions at the end of this. You can send them in. (laughs) Riderclubradio at gmail.com. There, I got it in before you turn the shit off. Fuck you. Yeah, now go to the end. (laughs) (laughs) So, that's all the news we have. We'll talk a little bit more about Pro Wrestler Man in the email section. But for now, why don't we talk about Animal Sentai Juoji? Give us a quick recap, Liam. Um, this is this f- the thrilling conclusion to the arc where Bungalay manages to beat everybody up and kidnap uh, Yamato. And he pretends to kill his friends, but then the Juojers make a triumphant return and they have a terrible robot. Jeff, what did you think of Juoji episode 35? And you're not fucking kidding about a terrible robot, but... <laughs> Uh, this episode was like a, a little dark for a child's show. I liked that. Yeah, it, it ended up being like a really great episode. I actually really love this episode. Uh, but there's like literal mental torture in this episode. And yeah. real torture, where a guy is chained up and beaten 
by a gorilla man. <laughs> Just like in real life. But he like sit, he watches his friends die and like screams out in utter anguish and despair at the top of his lungs. That was a great scene. That was Yes a, it was. It's it's hard a lot of actors in Toku don't really know how to do anguish properly. But Yamato's actor I thought got it pretty well. I, I agree with that. There was a lot of gravitas in this episode. Like, there was some fucking heavy themes. It was just one of those... It was, like I said, it was... When they revealed the title, Oh, the Juokja's Final Day, uh, like I said, that was show as fuck. The episode feels also pretty show of Like, the, the dire That's straits true. and the, 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 clave, the cutting plan that leads to the climax. Yeah, I really, really the like level those of, like, actual danger in it is actually really show as well. Because, I mean... Showa monsters were dumb rubber suit men, but they were, like, dangling children off of fucking bridges and, yeah. like, uh, poisoning fucking schools and shit. They that were doing, was, like, real terrible things. That was when they weren't stealing kids' homework and shit. Well, that's a little later. I'm that's... talking about earlier. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, Yamato's actor did an excellent job. I feel like, um... This has been built up over so many episodes that it was really satis. There was a lot of satisfaction to be had in this episode for us as an audience to see the culmination of Bungle's story and all the little seeds he's set as uh, the show has gone along with you know your connections are what makes you weak. Like you're gonna cause your friends nothing but anguish. Like I'm gonna kill everyone that you love. <laughs> I love Bungle so much. When he first appeared, I was like, "Ah, he's this blue fucker." <laughs> he's evolved into this guy who has like a like this very strong ideological opposition to Yamato, and he hates him personally. He doesn't have any plans about world conquest or anything. He hates that red guy, and he wants the whale, and that's his whole character. And I like that. That's interesting because he not only does he try to kill Yamato, but he tries to disprove his whole life. He tries to disprove his whole life philosophy all the time. He has a very simple, clear motivation that allows for lots of variations on a theme with him. Yeah, exactly. You, like, you have an episode over and over, the same sort of plot happened over and over with him, where he just did some shit to try to make Yamato's life terrible. That was his whole reason. Yeah, that's his whole reason for being. And then when the Cube Whale was his quarry that he wanted it was perfect synergy for him he got to kill the quarry he wanted and fuck up Yamato's life even further <laughs> <laughs> things just fell into place for Bungle everything was... was coming up Bungle well until this episode at least yeah yeah when they fucking murdered him well I mean you don't you don't you don't if you capture all the sentais and you get them in a really bad situation and, uh, well, you're probably gonna die, actually. It doesn't matter what episode it is. You're gonna if, get your you're a, if you're a monster, you're going to die. That's yeah. how it works. <laughs> I don't know why I thought they weren't gonna kill him last episode. I don't know. I guess because he was so important. But, like I said last episode as well, like, they kill the main bad guys in these shows all the time, so... Yeah. Like, this is, like, a big... Like, this is the culmination of his plot line, so if he didn't die at the end of this, it would feel weird to just have him kind of standing around. Like, I don't know what they'd do with him after this. I, yeah, that's true. I guess at the time, I thought he was just going to leave. He was going <laughs> to get ran off the planet, like, don't mess with this planet, and then he'd, like, leave. Oh, he's out of the story either way. Yeah, he's dead as fuck, instead. <laughs> like, even going the route of, like, the darker tone in the story, like, uh fucking Kubar slices his fucking hand off when he reaches to him for help. God, I love Kubar. Yeah, Kubar is like cold as ice. It's the classic bad guys team up and then one bad guy betrays the other bad guy. Which is, I love it, every time it ever happens. It happens in Senta, yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, like what makes you think that this horrible man who lies to everyone he ever knows is going to work with you and help you? It's a good scene, too, where he's like, you can tell, you know, the second he says, ah, Kubar, you're here, thank God, I need a hand. You're like, ah, oh, well, he's gonna do something, but he just he yeah. just slices his hand right off. Clever, clever guy. It's like, why do the Gotham villains work with the Joker all the time? <laughs> like, you'd think that the Joker would go to the Penguin and be like, I got this plan to kill Batman, and Penguin would be like, fuck off, Joker! Look, he gets results, okay? He doesn't get results. Batman's still alive. Well, 
He gets the closest to getting him. His plan is no. just to throw a rock at him or something. No, the closest to get get him was Killer Croc with his brilliant rock strategy. <laughs> he almost had him. Almost. It was a pretty big rock, I hear. <laughs> the ultimate bat defeating stratagem like batman has those boxes that have the other justice league members weaknesses in it mm-hmm. batman's box you open it it's just a big fucking rock pretty sick he has it for himself just in case if i lose my way superman take this big fucking rock and throw it at me <laughs> it almost worked once with your super strength it'll work this time oh uh, what's wonder woman's weakness uh, back in the day, like when she was first created, if she was bound by a man, she lost her powers. Oh yeah. Uh, nowadays her weakness is uh movie revenue. I imagine. <laughs> she doesn't actually have a. Wi- Most superheroes don't have a big blatant weakness anymore. They like even Green Lantern is not weak to the color yellow anymore. Really. Yeah, the only one who's still weak to shit like that is Superman. It's because it's part of his fucking mythos. Yeah. That Superman is so ingrained, there are some things about him that you really can't change. Yeah, Kryptonite's such a like clever part of his mythos, though. Like his he he never knew his home planet and pieces of it fucking kill him now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. And thematically it can be used really well. Uh, it, being weak to the color yellow cannot be used thematically very well. <laughs> like, they even tried to be, like, yellow is the color of fear and create, like, the parallax monster that was the embodiment of fear or whatever. But beyond the monster, that's still dumb. Well, at the end There's of the day, nothing you just, can do about that. You're just slapping the color yellow onto shit that doesn't really need to be yellow. It could just be yeah. fear monsters. It doesn't have to be yellow. You just put There's yellow the, on it. that part in Frank, that Frank Miller Batman comic. I think it might have been All Star Batman, where Batman paints everything in a room yellow oh, I've when seen Green that. Lantern comes over. Yeah, and just fucking like shit talks him the whole time they're in a room together. He's like <laughs> drinking lemonade, even. Yeah. <laughs> so you can do shit like that if you want to thoroughly embarrass and emasculate your hero. <laughs> Speaking of thoroughly embarrassing, uh, the Georges get a new mech in this episode. Oh my god! The the I assume like it's the, the pippy final... long stockings mech. <laughs> the Juo Super Dynamic Dodeca Taisa Tosai Super Juo King Dodecahedron robot with sixty foot legs, and it fucks up Bungle. Yeah, it kills him in two hits. Even as a matter of fact, <laughs> if you've been listening to this podcast for a time. Uh, back when Ghost was on, this we're robot, sorry. We're sorry. Yeah, first of all, back when Ghost was on, this this there were some scans with this robot in it, and I showed him to Jeff, and he almost died on stream of laughter. And if you seeing, remember that, seeing it live was even worse. <laughs> like every time he takes a step, you see like the actor's knees through the fucking cubes. Oh, here's what I'm most interested in. All right. Mm-hmm. So it's the same, it's the same, like, it's a human-sized suit, right? Yes. But it's like, it's supposed to be like 15 times bigger than the other robots. So how are they going to reconcile that? Is he still going to, are going to make smaller, tinier sets, or? No, they, they never do. Did you not, I guess you didn't watch Power Rangers when you were young, did you? Nope. And you don't watch a whole lot of Super Sentai where they combine robots a lot. But uh, what happens when they combine robots into a bigger robot is that they move the camera down lower. <laughs> That's it. Actually, the cubes can change size, can't they? Yes. Maybe they just make them smaller. Whatever you need to tell yourself to be okay with this. I'm performing a lot of mental gymnastics here. The real point is that it doesn't matter at I, all. Yeah, I guess. The answer is fuck you in the end. The answer is we're both pretty much tuning out these giant robot fights anyway. It doesn't matter. That's true. This week's episode of Georgia was one of the best, I thought. It, the yeah. show keeps out doing itself. I really was not expecting this level of, like, I don't want to say competence because Georgia's also, like, it's more than always competent. been competent. Ever since its beginning, it's more than competent. Georgia's always been more than confident. It's been great. Yeah. I didn't expect this level of, like... It's not like a Hollywood, like... Nobody's gonna win an Oscar for this shit, or whatever. Well, no. I mean... But it, it would win a daytime Emmy. It would win a daytime Emmy. 
<laughs> yeah, that, that, you know what? That's actually realistic. Fucking Dragon Knight won an Emmy, so anything's possible. Oh my god, that's not enough then. Um, <laughs> maybe like a Tony? I don't know. Tony's for stage, isn't it? Gra- Give it a Grammy, I don't know. Let's get good music. Yeah. yeah actually, the fucking um, Dodai Super Ultimate Omega fucking Level 3 King Super Duo. No one is ever going to remember this name. Uh, has the the sickest theme in the whole series. You know what? Like, I the don't music they played was fucking awesome. You should go back and listen to it when maybe, we're done. Maybe I will. It's so good. It's very like classic Super Sentai song. I'm waiting. What I'm waiting for is for the Georgia soundtrack to drop so that I can get it. Yeah, I had absolutely no interest in the Ghost soundtrack, but I'm really interested in the Georgia soundtrack. It's got a lot of good tracks on it. And I wouldn't say no interest. There's a lot of like uh, incidental music in the like background music and shit and Ghost that's really good. Some of it, yeah. There's some good tracks on there. It's a shame they remind me of Ghost. Yeah, exactly. I feel <laughs> like people give me a lot of shit for not liking the Ghost theme, but it's attached to Ghost. That's fucking tainted forever for me. There's there's no way for me to ever enjoy it, even if I did. <laughs> uh, Juoger, like I said, continues to surpass. It's own mark of excellence. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's a fucking great Sentai show. Just a great show, period. I love it. Yeah, and I thought it wasn't going to because, like, you know, maybe the difference between Ghost and Juoja was what was making Juoja seem so good. Mm-hmm. In the back of my head, that's what I was thinking when X8 started and it was good. Mm-hmm. Um, the f- first couple episodes while X8 was playing reinforced that because they were good, but they weren't, like, blowing my mind excellent like the previous ones were. Yeah. Uh, this shows that Juoger is amazing on its own merits, regardless Always. of what it's being uh, compared to. It stumbles, but it never falls. Exactly. It's a great show. It's a, it's a 9 out of 10 show. So now let's move on to some emails. Yeah, give me some emails. Our first email is the one we teased earlier. It's from Snacks Demand. He says, hey guys, X8 is a great relief from Boring Ghost. I have two questions. I know you probably talked about it in the news. But, well, well. Uh, but Hiroshi Tanahashi is supposed to be in the Pac-Man vs. X-Aid movie. He's a wrestler in the New Japan Pro Wrestling. But do you think the movie exclusive form will be a grappler or pro wrestler? Um, it's That's actually interesting that you should say that because uh, there's a picture of the robot bugster that he plays. Oh, let me and, see that shit. Yeah, actually, you'll see for yourself. He has like a big... Like, crane hand? Like, a hook hand kind of thing? Oh, he'll definitely be, like, a grappler type. So he's, he's gonna grapple some motherfuckers, that's for sure. So, yeah, we, we both think he's gonna. If you've seen that picture, well, if you haven't seen that picture, you can check out the blog post for today's episode, and it'll be right there in the blog post. Yeah, I'll be looking at it live for your amusement. Jeff will be uh, reacting live. Right now. Oh, that's pretty... He's got a dumb head, but otherwise it's really cool. <laughs> It's um, you know, you he's know, so angry. He's X- got such angry face. He's got a pissed off face. You know, X has got that red robot form. Yeah, that's it looks similar. That's that. Yeah, that's it's the same. It's like a prototype version of that gashat that he uh, uses. I like his doctor's outfit. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. He he looks really familiar too. I think I know him. Do you? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Ian's always posting. Yeah, like, wrestling stuff. Uh, wrestling stuff. So I probably saw him there. Shout shouts out to Ian. Shout out to Ian, who was on the show before. If you don't remember, go back and listen to it. It was probably uh, terrible. Besides him, go back and listen to all episodes. Don't start at the first one. Uh, <laughs> also, I don't know if you answered this before, but what is your favorite rider kick? We might have, but I don't really remember. I don't think I've answered that. What's your favorite rider kick? That's tough. Oh, no, that's not tough. Um, it's the super electro Inazuma kick that Stronger does when he's charged yeah. up. That's the sickest shit on the planet. He does, like, that a is drill. a pretty fucking cool kick. That's my favorite. What about you, Jeff? I will always have a bit of a soft spot for the V3 kick. Oh, because yeah. Because he does, like, six fucking backflips before he yes. kicks. <laughs> A V three ton ten kick. It's like the return kick, where he mm. does he jumps and kicks and then does like six back flips and then kicks again. That's my favorite 
show a trope, like in terms of uh, stunts, is when they jump and it's clearly them doing six different backflips, but they try to sell it like it's six different backflips in the same jump. Yeah. By like trying to use clever editing, but it's really fucking obvious. I love stuff like that. Um, I also really love like Agito's rider kick because Believe Yourself plays during it every time. <laughs> And that really does a lot to sell it. And also, like, the slow, like, posing down and getting ready to do the kick. Yeah, it's one of, with a symbol appearing on the floor. Yeah. It's very that's, cool. That's pretty fucking sick, too. It's pretty fucking sweet. I also really love drives when the car is doing the fucking donuts around him. I was just going to say, off of it. for a newer one, drives is really neat. Yeah. I don't know if it's my favorite, but I fucking got hyped the first time I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, that one's cool. uh, I'll choose that. I'll choose Drive's Kick for my favorite. Really? I don't I don't remember being that excited to see a rider kick. Yeah. That's pretty um, cool. Nah, I'm going to choose V3 Return Kick. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? What do we got? Uh, thanks, for writing, thanks for writing in Snacks Demand. Thanks. Our next one is from Magus. Okay. I liked your I liked your game with the frog man. Oh, you're being cheeky. Yeah. Hey guys at RCR, long time listener, first time writer. Found you guys about three fourths in a drive and have been watching since. Oh, that's early. Yeah, it is. You have been a long time listener. Jeez. Even though the dark chapter of RCR history, the series that shall uh, even through the dark chapter of RCR history, the series that shall not be named, but your show made it all the more bearable. Thank God. Yeah, I'm Happy glad we did that. something to help people through that shit. Yeah. After coming off watching episode four of X8, I'm starting to see what you guys mean when the show's going a bit too fast. So I have to ask. Do you guys think in some capacity the writers are compensating for the shitty reception of Ghost by revealing the plot and transformations too quickly? Or are they just scrambling to put the pieces into place? I think it's the latter. I, I See, that's one of the things. I wish I had like a, a friend who lived in Japan or something who could tell me what Japanese people think about this shit. Because sometimes I have no idea. Apparently yeah. Ghost stuff is not selling well at all. So I don't, like I imagine Toei would assume it's, it's something of a disappointment. But I don't know. I mean, sometimes big companies have no fucking clue. So I don't know if Toei even knows that Ghost sucks. I don't know either. I do think that Liam is right. I hate to say that. It hurts my tongue to speak it. But I think he's right. They're just trying to put the pieces into place for this series. They have bigger plans for it, it seems like to me. I think tomorrow shit's going to get, or next week, shit's going to get started. They're putting all the pieces on the table to get ready to play the game. Just they, they, uh, I think they, they wrote it and they said, we want a show with five riders. Let's just get the five riders out there real fast. And then we can start mm-hmm. the ship. So that's a, that's a theory. I don't know. I don't got a window in their, in their brains. I have no idea r- what the real answer is. And I don't <laughs> think we'll ever really know because Toei's pretty tight-lipped about that kind of shit. Maybe if the writer gets a stray hair and starts talking about it, like... Uh, I was trying to think of the guy who did Gaim and... Uh, Ur- Urobuchi. Yeah, Urobuchi. He just got a stray hair and started talking about behind-the-scenes stuff that you're probably not supposed to talk about. What did he say? I didn't hear about this. Well, I've mentioned it a million times on the show about how he talked about they gave him the toys first and told him to write a series around it. Oh, yeah. Like the behind-the-scenes shit like that. Yeah, they, yeah that's, that's how a writer is. Uh, the email continues... Okay. Also, after seeing Genom Level 3 transformation in the soon-to-follow x Level 3, was it really necessary this early on? And if not, what do you think they could do to slow it down from here on? Personally, I think they should just keep the Level 3s to just x and Genom for another five episodes or so. Loving the show, and keep up the Lord Takeshi Hongo's work. Magus. <laughs> um, yes, I think they're revealing the forms too fast. I think they should have kept... If... if, 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 if... Like, what they've done up until this exact point is fine. Like, Genom comes out, he's got a level three, fucks everybody up, and then have, like, five episodes of him, like, what do we do? That'd be great. But giving x level three in the next episode, I think, is a little... That's a little much. I like it when a character other than the main character gets a form first, and then everyone has to sort of scramble to work around that. I like that plot line. But it doesn't seem like it's going to last. He's, he's going to get another form next episode. x is, so... I tell you shame. what I would like that what? I don't remember ever happening in right. Common Rider 
is that if a villain got a, uh, like a new form or something, and the hero figured out a way to defeat them without just getting a stronger form. Yeah. That's or, something that you don't see a lot of in tokusatsu in general, is characters using their abilities in clever ways to defeat enemies that are more powerful than them. Yeah, that's, it's usually just forms and then a big rider kick. It's like, uh, I always think of Wily Odysseus when I think of that. Uh, like the main character of the Odyssey, I know everybody fucking knows that already. But Odysseus, uh, like, fixes all of his problems by being clever. Yeah. He doesn't fix them by being stronger than anybody. He's or a anything. classic hero. He knows how to ride on the bottom of a lamb. <laughs> That's all you need to be a hero. I think just uh, know how to ride a lamb. <laughs> if if I lived in an ideal world. Uh, Genom would get his first. They'd get him in reverse order. Genom would get his first. They'd be like a few episodes of everyone scrambling around. What do we, what do, we do? And then Snipe gets his hands on one because he wants him real bad. And he's like, ah, fuck it. Or like they, they scramble around. They have to work together reluctantly whenever Genom shows up. And then Snipe gets one. He's like, oh, good. I don't have to team up with these dicks anymore. And then shit gets worse and worse. And then Ray's or Laser. See, I, think that's, I think that's a little too much. I would like that. If, what if, I would do is... Um... Genom gets it. For a okay. few episodes, they're like, you know, scrambling around, wondering what to do. Like, anytime he shows up, he floors them. Yeah. Then, uh, like you said, Snipe gets it. And he defeats Genom, and Genom goes running off with his tail between his legs. But Snipe is an even worse problem than Genom. Oh, because he's not, he's not as collected and... and yeah, and yeah. he doesn't work with them at all. Yeah. And he's, like, <laughs> trying to take their shit from them. And they barely get away over and over until Emu finally gets... Uh, in a perfect world, he figures a way around it, but never in Common Rider. So he, he gets his upgrade finally. Yeah, that 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 would be ideal. Shame it's not going to happen, but... No. What Next episode, he already has the form. <laughs> That's it, Like I said, it's toy schedules. You have to have this form out by this date, mm-hmm. etc. You gotta work around it, and I think they're just trying to... Maybe it's... I just thought of something. Maybe the reason why all these characters are being introduced right at the beginning and all these forms are being introduced right at the beginning is because Toei wants to put out all the toys at once. You think that might be like a new strategy because toy sales were so shit recently? or Maybe. Like, I don't know. Like, like That would be a good reason for why all this stuff is front-loaded like this. Yeah. They're in the show right away. Kids are seeing them. Another more terrifying reason is that uh, there's just going to be more forms throughout the series. <laughs> like, more and more and more. Like, Genom's going to eventually have, like, 38 forms or something. He's, he's going to have so many things on his shoulders, he's not even going to be able to move. He's just going to have to roll around. <laughs> he's going to look like the new Super Sentai robot. <laughs> <laughs> like, six bikes on his legs and three bikes on his head. <laughs> Uh, so thanks for writing in, Magus. Thank Appreciate you. it. Our last question is from Wild Saber. Somehow I think these aren't your real names. Yeah, folks. yeah. Mr. Saber, we need you to make a tax return. <laughs> Send your W-2 to the warehouse on the edge of town. <laughs> Here's a podcast question for you. What if Emu gets a continue at early on in the series, but when he dies, he restarts from the point he collected it, while also keeping his knowledge and upgrades, sort of like a new game plus? Your only British fan, Wild Saber. I don't want a character to die and come back again. Yeah, as clever as that is, I would rather not have a character die and come back. Somebody uh, made a joke about that earlier. Somebody I saw on the internet. And they were like, oh, imagine if there was a saving system, like a thing to let you save your game, and he would use it to like do a Groundhog Day thing until he gets the day right in one episode. I think that'd be funny. <laughs> that would be funny, but I really don't want that to happen. Yeah, well. Because like, that, just... that opens up the bad writing door to just bring whoever that dies back, which uh, has plagued comic books forever. Yeah, it's just ghosted it three times and even drive it at once. I'd like one series... Without a, a fantabulous resurrection. I think that's kind of wearing thin. I can agree with that. I could definitely agree with that. Yeah. The click and save thing is... Um, it's it's a cool translation, but I'm not entirely sure that's exactly what it is. I'm pretty sure it's just the translation. I don't but, think that's uh, the exact translation. <laughs> the thing is, when they get low on health... Like, there's real dire circumstances there. You can feel it in yeah. the scene. Like, if they get hit again, they're fucking dead. And I like that. I like that there's real dire circumstances. Like, 
in other series, there's no visual representation that the character's actually about to fucking get killed. Yeah, they get smacked around all day long. Yeah, like, characters are constantly standing up with, like, a broken arm and blood streaming from every <laughs> pore in their body, and they still keep fighting, so you never know when the, where the stakes are actually high or not. Yeah, at least this one is a quick little visual reminder. All it has to do is poke the camera at their chest for a second, and you can see, yeah. oh, he's gonna die, okay, uh, stakes are up. Stakes are something that Tokusatsu, um, at least like Toei Tokusatsu, doesn't really do very well yeah. most of the time. Yeah. So um, I'm really excited to see there being an obvious visual representation that they can't ignore story wise. Well, don't speak too soon about ignoring. We'll yeah, see. they can ignore whatever, really, but <laughs> it's it's more of a push towards keeping track of it, I guess. Yeah. I'm sure they're not even going to fucking mention it past a certain point. Oh, ye of little faith. Hey, I was right about my predictions with Ghost as I got more and more disenchanted with it. I think Ghost was just a really predictable shitty show. Because we that were both terrible. right about a lot of things. I hated it. It was such a bad show. But I'm really enjoying x and I really enjoyed that email. Yeah, I, I loved thanks it. Thanks for writing in, Wild Saber. Thanks. Was that your favorite email of My the evening? My favorite is probably the best one so far that we've got. In the wow. Show. Fuck all the rest of you guys. <laughs> you can write in and tell Liam that he's an asshole, or ask us any questions about tokusatsu or uh, whatever. It doesn't even have to be tokusatsu related. By sending an email to writerclubradio at gmail.com. Or, if you're under the age of 50 and you don't use email anymore, uh, you can find us on Twitter at Rider Club Radio, and you can send us a tweet, and we'll answer Twitter questions too. Or you can just follow us. If you want your uh, Twitter question asked on the air, uh, mention that. Yeah, specify. Because I mean, people send us tweets like I don't even know the day after our new episode has come out. You know, it's going to be a fucking week before we get to this again, <laughs> right? It's Twitter. There's always it happens every now and again. Someone will send us a question like, "What do you guys think of this?" And one of us will be like, "Yeah, it's pretty good." And they're like, "Oh, I meant for that to be a, a podcast question." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that does happen a lot. Yeah, especially with me. For a long time, I would just answer whatever question was asked of us immediately yeah. on Twitter. I don't anymore, so you're safe. But just <laughs> let us know that you want it said on the podcast. Jeff doesn't just answer everything like some sort of fucking walking around like he owns the place, answering questions. I do own the place. My name's on the deed, motherfucker. That's true. That's true. Jeff's name is on the deed. I scrawled it on there in magic marker. We bought this abandoned warehouse together. Your name's not on the deed, bitch. Oh. Dead guy's name is on it. And it's marked out with a little sticker with a skull and crossbones next to it. <laughs> a little common Rider skull logo. <laughs> Does this mean he became common Rider skull? No, it means he's yeah, fucking, he fucking dead. Wishes. He he's probably is a skull at this point. <laughs> uh, so thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you next week. See you. Peace.